is Forrest Lee Jr. and welcome to Bee Bender 101. Uh, this is the newest series of instruction videos that I've come out with and um, the first one is just basic understanding of a bee bender. We're going to go over everything that you need to know to get started with it. If you just recently purchased a bee bender or uh, if you're thinking about buying a bee bender guitar, well this will get you started so that you're not in the dark right off the bat. Um, this will be a little bit more in-depth look at um, how it works and the common uses. Uh, stuff that I've picked up over the years. First I want to tell you about this guitar real quick. This is a uh, this is a brand new guitar made by myself and uh, Jimmy Mayo at Skullbone Guitars. Um, Crossroads uh, Musical Instruments. And um, in fact it's still got the plastic on it right here. <laughs> we haven't, haven't even taken that off. Uh, this, this bender is a uh, it's similar to uh, my Frankentelli bender and um, this will hopefully give you an understanding of, uh, of, you know, how the bender itself works and take it to the next level. And then we can go on to G benders and things like that. Uh, one more thing I might want to add is uh, when you're learning how to use a B bender, do it at home, experiment at home. Experimentation turns into um, experience. And in my 20 plus years playing with a B bender, because I've had one since I was a kid, um, my you know, my experience has brought me, you know, session work and, and uh, major label artist gigs and things like that, but I didn't, I didn't learn how to play it on stage because, you know, that could have been disastrous. And a lot of times when somebody picks up my guitar, if, if we're playing it, if I'm playing something downtown and somebody wants to sit in and I hand them my guitar, if they're not used to the bender, then the next thing you know they're trying to play bender licks in chords and places that it just doesn't work and it's and it sounds pretty atrocious so um, <laughs> so do all your experimenting at home and then uh, once you've got it down then take that out out in you know out in the real world and and, uh, and just don't overplay it I mean, just because you have a bender doesn't mean you have to use it it's kinda like a whammy bar just because it's attached to your guitar doesn't mean you're gonna dive bomb all day long that's the same way you gotta look at it with a B bender just because you have one doesn't mean you uh, need to use right it. off the bat let's just get tuned up uh, we'll, I'll give you the tuning of the strings and then we'll go ahead and tune the bender because that's, that's another thing you got to make sure is the bender is always in tune. So here's your E string, big E. A. Here's your D string. G. B. And your little E. Okay, now we're going to bend the uh, the bender up and make sure that it's in tune. It's supposed to be tuned up uh, one whole step or two frets. So that note, if you're using, uh, say, like a uh, Boss chromatic tuner or, or uh, some kind of tuner that you know that actually shows you all of the different notes. Uh, you want to tune it to a C sharp, okay? Unless you have some alternate tuning on your guitar. That bent note, it should be a C sharp. Now another way you can do it is you can go to the uh, to the D note on the B string and bend it up to an E. And that should be the same as, or as, as the uh, open E. So, E note on the B string bent with the bender, and that's the open E string. So, okay. So once you got that in tune, then we can go ahead and move on to some other stuff. Okay, the first thing we need to go over is chord shapes. Um, the the major chord shape, you know, the regular chord shapes like an E chord or an A chord or a D chord. Or C chord, or say an F chord, like a bar chord. If you play it down here like this, or like that, either way you want to do it. Um, and the B flat, like a B flat, like an A position. That bar chord. Those are a couple of the things that you're going to use a lot is bar chords. So. Um, to start with, we'll, we'll just go with the A position. So like saying A sus2, where you're leaving the B string open, 
Well, you can use your bender to bend that back up to an A. Okay, uh, and if you suspend it up here, like that's a sus4, I think, you can bend that up to your A. Okay, and so it's basically come that note. Okay, so there's a couple of them you can do with an A, bending it up from an open string and then bending it up from the 3rd fret on the B string. Okay. You can even fret the 5th fret on the E string to get that extra A note. Okay, um, if you just do an A chord and then bend it up with the bender, you could go a half step, but you can't go a whole step because it, it'll discord. You can kind of, if you can, if your bender is one where you can, you can really control it and go, you know, a half step. Because if you go a whole step, it doesn't work. So a lot of guys will do that with an A chord. They'll be like, it's like, dang, that didn't, that didn't sound very good. Let's move on to a, uh, an A seventh. Uh, like, uh, again, you can't just play an A seventh with the bender because it won't work. But if you play, that chord, which is an A seventh, and then you're suspending it. Okay. You know that will work. Uh, again, you can you can just play the uh, second fret on the D string, like an A seventh, and then take your uh, take your B string off. And then you're bending up to an A7, right? So that'll work. Um, moving on from the A position, uh, here's, here's the key about that. Anything that you can do in the A position right here, you can move it up to, say, the B flat, okay, and do the same thing. Because you can move that A, A chord anywhere as long as you know the bar method version of playing an A chord, which is what I showed you in the B flat there. So here an A, B flat, B, C, D, E, F. You get my point, G. Um, okay, let's move up to the E position. Uh, you can play an E, uh, regular E chord and hit the bender and it'll work. Okay. Same way with a uh, 7. Or you can play an E 7th like this and bend that up. Uh, and you can move that up and down the neck so like a Here's an F. Or a G. Or Okay, now for the D position, uh, there's a few different things that you can do. Uh, the D position being like that. You can bend it up right there from a D chord. Which is kind of a cool suspension thing bringing it back down. Or you can go from a D7 up to a D. And you can play licks throughout those. I'll, I'll go over that a little bit later on. Uh, D minor. Works real cool with a D minor. Or you can play an F just on the bottom three strings and bend that up to a D minor. Okay, so here's your D minor. 
So there's a few different things you can do there. Um, uh, let's see, the C position, which is essentially the same thing as the D position, um, like like this. Okay. Uh, down here for a C. If if you bend that up, you're getting that same thing that you would get with the D. Or you could do a seventh version of it. Okay. would be a ninth, I believe. Okay. Or you can go up here and bend that up. Okay, so there's a couple of different things you can do there. Um, minor chord shapes. I already touched on the D minor, but minor chord shapes are a little bit different. Uh, an A minor... right off the bat with an A minor. Or an A minor 7th. You can use anywhere you're coming back up to the root note or to a note in it. Like the E note. You know, you can use it. Anything like that. Basically, that's an A minor seventh is like a C. Okay. Uh, same way with a D minor. It's like uh, the D seventh. Uh, so, like a D minor seventh would be a would be an F, correct? You're just, you're just letting the uh, D string ring, so... So, there you go for the, uh, for the D. D minor. Or for a D minor 7th, which is an F. Now for an E minor, uh, you can't use it with an E minor, just just standard like that. It won't it won't sound good. That doesn't work. But you can use it with an E minor seventh. So that gives you a few different things you can uh, look at as far as chords. Um, uh, and another thing, you can take those chord shapes and move them anywhere you want to. Uh, the the C position, you know, uh, you can move that up to a D seven, you know, or an E seven, or an F, you know. Or just like this. So there's a few different things you can do there. Uh, you can move that up anywhere you want. The G position is kind of hard to do that. I played with a, a major label artist. Uh, named Jace Everett, and uh, one of the songs that he did, a Radney Foster song, uh, had this Russ Paul pedal steel part in it, and since Jace didn't have a steel player in the band at the time, I was kind of doing the steel player's part. Um, uh, the, uh, the, the lick that I had to play in the song, um, which kicked off the song, one, two, three, four... something like that for the rhythm part. Uh, the lead part, uh, the, the steel guitar part, which I just transposed over to a, um, a Telecaster with a bender, is...
basically it, where I'm just playing the A position, but up at the 10th fret. That's it. And then uh, I'm just not playing the full chord. I'm just playing it at the 8th fret and bending it up. And then down the 3rd fret. So something like that. And notice that I'm letting it ring out. Because I want it to get that, that pedal steel type. Or some kind of yanking it out of tune a little bit. So uh, that's, that's one example of where you could use it. Uh, now going into the chords, like... up from the and releasing it you know stuff like that okay now I want to do a little segment called six degrees um, basically it's six degrees from Graham Parsons but also the bender uh, is supposed to be on about a six degree anyway the, uh, the back to the Graham Parsons thing um, when when Clarence originally invented and Gene Parsons and Graham Parsons no relation by the way uh, but when Clarence and Gene invented the Bender uh, right about that same time Graham was in the band the Birds and a lot of the guys that played with Graham or uh, or played with Clarence you know somehow it, they all ended up with Benders a lot of those guys so the kind of the the history of it dates back to like the Graham Parsons Flying Burrito brothers and uh, when he was in the Birds and stuff like that. So, so I'm going to suggest that everybody goes out and gets the Bird Sweetheart of the Rodeo album. That's like the first bender. And then album. another guy was Bernie Leiden. He ended up playing in um, in the Flying Burrito brothers, um, and he played some great bender stuff on some Eagles albums. Graham pretty much discovered Emmy Lou Harris and Emmy Lou Harris ended up having some of the greatest bender players of all time in her band. Uh, Ricky Skaggs for one, he never played guitar for her I don't think. Uh, Albert Lee, some great Albert Lee bender work on on the uh, Emmy Lou Harris. Like the Luxury Liner album, he plays uh, he plays some stellar stuff on that. So all the all the Ricky Skaggs albums <clears throat> um, Emmy Lou Harris stuff. You got to go out and get a bunch of Emmy Lou Harris albums, Ricky Skaggs albums, uh, Marty Stewart, who ended up with Clarence's guitar, uh, another Graham Parsons fan. Uh, all of Marty's stuff has a lot of Bender music in it too. So you know, there's uh, the Bernie Leiden Eagles stuff, like Peaceful Easy Feeling. That was that was one of the first things I heard. Led Zeppelin. Jimmy Page used a Bender on all kinds of Zeppelin stuff, and people don't really think about it, but like uh, that one song. Um, I think it was like uh, uh, whatever the uh, all of my love. Well, I think is what, what he's doing for the bender, the first, the first real bender lick in it, other than the. Uh, You know, where he's just playing chords. The uh, the first lick is is actually a D chord. You know, and then the other one is a is a B chord. Where he's just bending it up to a B, and then and releasing it. Uh, the peaceful, easy feeling uh, solo. That one's pretty straight ahead. It's it's in the key of E. <clears throat> uh, you start at the twelfth fret and bend it up.
so you're starting on the 12th fret and you're playing the B and the E strings together. So that's the first part of the riff. And then bending it up on the B string. And then you have to bend the G string by yourself huh, without the assistance of a mechanical device. That little lick there is just uh, the E note on the G string. Da -da 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 -da, which is a pedal steel, totally a pedal steel lick. So, real slow. And then he bends it up from the uh, 12th fret to the 9th fret on the, uh, on the uh, E string, which is the same note. Okay. And then two frets up. And then up here at the A flat note, he bends it up to an A. So up to your A note. And then bending it up from the uh, uh, 15th fret and back to the unison thing. One thing I might add is when you're playing the B bender, if you yank on it a little too hard, you will yank it's it out. It's pretty easy to knock them out, um, especially if you're really wrenching on it hard, you know. So you don't want to wrench on it too hard. You just want to kind of come up to the pitch and not push any harder than you have to push. Because, you know, if the harder you push, the more out the rest of the guitar is going to go because you're actually yanking on the neck. So. so the whole guitar goes out of tune a little bit. It's okay when you're not pressing too hard, though. Um, actually, I'll go back to the... Uh, to the uh, Albert Lee. Uh, it's another thing that I learned right off the bat. I, I had the Luxury Liner, Emily Lou Harris's Luxury Liner album when I was like eight or nine or ten. Nine, I think. My mom had it. And I would go through the record collection with all the Beatles records and everything else, the, you know, my sister's Zeppelin records. And I, I pulled out that Emmy Lou Harris album and I listened to that and I went, oh my god, these guys are the most amazing musicians. I mean, everybody was, you know, Tony Brown, Emery Gordy Jr., um, Ricky Skaggs, Albert Lee, Rodney Crowell, just all these great players, and uh, the Hot Band. And after listening to that album, I mean, that's the one that really turned me into a country guitar player. And a lot of the stuff that, that really twisted my ear were these B-Bender licks, like the... You know, uh, stuff that uh, Albert Lee was doing with the Bender... Um, like the Say La Vie solo, which is that's part of it. Um, and you can learn all that stuff if you go out and get Albert's videos. I think he shows you how to play some of that stuff. I'm not going to go over then it. Then I started getting uh, into the Ricky Skaggs albums just because I was trying to get anything, get my hands on anything that had Albert Lee on it. And I discovered some really great Ricky Skaggs B-Bender stuff, which really brought it to my attention that it was a B-Bender because I didn't know that it was a bender. I had no idea how Jimmy Page and Bernie Leadon and, uh, you know, Pete Townsend, I think, played some Bender stuff. All these guys were playing these really cool licks, and I could not figure out how they were doing it. I was trying to learn it like this. You know, uh, you know, I'm bending it up with my fingers, and it was, it was tough. And the, and the, uh, the A stuff, you know, I was bending it below the nut. Which didn't work as good as, you know... There's just some things that you can't get. Uh, so the Ricky Skaggs stuff really turned me around. I was watching Ricky play I'm Tired or something at one of the concerts that I went to a long time ago. And uh, that's when I noticed that it was a B bender. And I went, whoa, that device is bending the B string a whole step. That's, And then from then on, I spent like probably two years trying to make my own and figure out how to do it without breaking strings. And I broke hundreds of strings trying to make well, One of the cool licks that I learned um, was a song called I'm Tired in the key of C and it's uh, uh, 
uh, the last part of it has a bender thing in it, but I'll have to set it up. It's like... <laughs> sure that's how how the lick went um but the thing that caught my eye and my ear was when he went up to this uh we're in the key of c when he went up to the 11th and 12th fret 11 on the b string and 12 on the on the e that was a cool lick you know uh and it's really simple stuff So those are a couple of cool things that you can, if you go back and listen to that stuff and decipher it, there's all kinds of really cool licks that you can pull out of there. Um, off the Ricky Skaggs albums, the, the Emmylou Harris albums, and then Marty Stewart started getting into some other stuff that was just totally B-Bender based. Simple pedal steel guitar, you know, Ralph Mooney type licks with a bender, with a B-Bender that you know, really caught me. I was like, wow, I love this guy. You know, I don't know who he I saw him playing with um, Johnny Cash back in like 1981 or something like that when I was a kid. And I remember thinking, man, that guy's a cool gu guitar player. He's a great guitar player. And he's part I think he was probably playing Clarence's guitar. But he didn't do a whole lot of B-Bender stuff back then because it was Johnny Cash, you know. <laughs> that type of stuff. Um, it was only later on that I, I really got into the B-Bender stuff, so I don't want to ramble too much. It seems like I'm talking an awful lot here and not playing a lot. Here's a lick from one of my songs. It's not your typical pedal steel lick, but this will give you a little bit of an idea what you can do when you're experimenting. It's from a song called Lazy Fingers uh, off my Telethon album. And, uh, and the reason it's called Lazy Fingers is because I'm not really doing a whole lot with my fingers. I'm, I'm letting the bender do a lot of the work. Uh, it starts on the uh, eighth fret on the B string, ninth fret on the E string, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend it up and hold it, and then I'm going to bring my my uh, pinky finger off down to my index finger at the seventh fret on the E string. Okay, and uh, here's here's what the first part sounds like, and release it. So it's kind of it's got that. Uh, whatever the word is that's like uh, I don't know about that and then uh, the same type of thing down at the third fret the D note on the B string and then the uh, A note on the uh, E string and I'm gonna bend that up and do the same thing pull my pinky off and then come down to the G right and then come to that now I played that with this distortion on the album so here's what it sounds like with the distortion Another really cool lick that I picked up um, was like doing the downtown Nashville thing, seven in a band that like every guitar player in town's played in. Brent's played in it, uh, Red Volkart, Johnny Highland, me, uh, pretty much every other guitar player in Nashville has played for this guy. Um, and one of the things that I learned was uh, I wanted to incorporate the bender into some of the type of songs that they were doing. So, like in the key of E. You know, I would do that, that lick there. Okay. That's, that's the chord. Which is the, uh, your pinky finger is on the seventh fret on the G string, and then your middle finger is on the fifth fret of the B, and your index finger is on the fourth fret of the B, uh, the E string. So that's, that's the chord. And then bending that up. Okay, so. You know, and then coming back down to an E. And then to the B, you could just do the same. Uh, one thing that I always use to finish off is uh, 
where it's not a B bender lick, but I'm bending the G string up a half step with my with my finger, and I'm just playing the chord. Okay. Or you could even bend that. And you can get real elaborate and do it all below the nut. Which is kind of a cool effect if you're uh, showing off, you know, and playing something. You know, whatever. <laughs> I just whacked this thing way out of tune, so I better tune it up real quick. Okay, here's another song that I played a lot, and. Um, the uh, the B bender wasn't much used for like solos or any effect like that. It was basically to emulate the pedal steel guitar player who wasn't present because <laughs> they hired me to play guitar and uh, to cover all the pedal, pedal steel licks. So I'll just kind of give you the gist of the song here. F sharp. Okay, it, the verses kick on the four. It's gonna go back to four, one, five, one. Okay. Uh, number system. If you haven't figured that out, I'll kind of go over that real briefly too. Um, but anyway, your one is your F sharp to a B to a C sharp. And what I would play, you know, if there's a rhythm player or another guitar player, then I might just do some real padding stuff like one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Also using a volume pedal for almost everything that I do live, so it would be more like this. Now, obviously, it's kind of hard for me to play with a volume pedal and the guitar strapped on while I'm sitting down, so. The, the effect isn't perfect, but if I turn, turn a little bit, let's see if I can get it. And then uh, maybe come up here. So you can always do the, um, go, go down to the flat seven. Okay, and bend it up there. So um, if you're Going from the one chord to the four chord, you can go down to the flat seven with a bender uh, in transition, okay? So. Okay, if you're in the A position. And then just change your uh, pinky finger uh, over to here. And then you're at your four chord. A better example would be in the key of E. Bender in the A position at the seventh fret. See where all I'm doing is I'm bending it up. And I'm holding it. And then holding it there, changing to the A chord. And releasing it. For a little bit more a licky thing, um, back in the key of A, you can always do this. Um, well, you can bend it up from here from a regular A chord, bending it up, and then coming up here to the uh, same thing that I did up here in the key of C. You're doing it down in A. So bending it up. And you can release it there, or 
release it there. And then coming down to that flat seven thing. And then back to an open A. So. time. And there's one cool thing, Will Raylick that, uh, that uh, picked up off one of the Helicaster albums, which is actually a cool thing. He's playing an A. And then he's at the uh, third fret on the B string and the sixth fret on the G string. And then he brings that up to the uh, sixth fret on the B string and the uh, uh, see, ninth fret on the G string, and then up to a uh, like a D chord. Okay. So again, I always like that when I used to. A lot. Wish Marty would do a video on B Bender stuff because he did so much of it. Uh, basic Marty Stewart type stuff would be like, a, you know, where he's just. Uh, where you're doing the pedal steel thing, half step up, half step up, and then open the second fret on the G string. So D string, first fret, second fret, first fret, second fret, G, G string. Bending the B string up, and then second fret. Second fret to open E string. Releasing the B, and then. And the many different variations on that. Taking it to the next level. And releasing a half step. So. That's always a cool one. So you can also use the B bender and some chicken picking stuff if you want. Um, something in the key of A. Uh, the only thing you're you're worried about is that you're at the mercy of how fast it comes back. So if your bender has a real quick, um, you know, if it's got a hard pull, it usually will snap back pretty quick. I like mine fairly soft, so it doesn't snap back as fast. So I kind of have to go like this. Um, also, if you're standing up, the weight of the guitar, you know, also puts a little more weight on it. So. But say for a chicken picking thing, you might want to come up here to this lick. Something like that, uh, where uh, I already showed you that one. And then down to the fifth fret. And then the flat seven type lick. And then going from the fifth fret to the third fret. You know, bending that up and down. And then uh, same thing down on the A. You can hit it at the uh, the E string, you can hit it at the 2nd fret, 3rd fret, 4th fret. So bending it up. So that's kind of cool. You can also use these seventh chords like the D7. And playing an actual chord for a lick. You know. You know, anything like that will work. In a different key just to see you know how I would approach it say in the key of G okay so that all I'm the only lick that I'm really playing with the bender is coming up to the uh, sixth fret on the B string 
8 and the 7th fret on the G, or on the uh, E. So, uh, so I'm just doing that 7th, G7 thing. So that's bending down and then down to the G note and the D on the B string, but bending it from the E down to the D note. And then 6th fret, 5th fret, uh, so. <laughs> One more time. So that's kind of cool. You know, this is the first of a new series of videos that's coming out, and I don't want to, I don't want to get in over my head on stuff that I'm going to cover a little bit later on. Like there's going to be a B and a G bender video um, later on in the series, and this is just B bender 101. So this is the stuff that you definitely, absolutely have to have, and I think I've pretty much covered everything. Uh, most of the chord shapes that you can use, major chords, seventh chords, uh, suspended chords, minor chords, uh, the different positions you can use up and down the neck, uh, a little bit of history on the bender, and some really good albums that you absolutely have to get. Like Bird Sweetheart of the Rodeo, gotta get it. Um, all of Marty Stewart stuff, all of Ricky Skaggs stuff, um, especially when he had Albert in the band, uh, all the Emmy Lou Harris stuff when she had Albert in the band. What else um, is there? There's some great Led Zeppelin stuff that you need to get copies of. The Honey Dripper, Sea of Love. Seek that out. Try to find that. That's a great oh, B-Bender. Um, plus the Eagles. You know, you listen to some old Eagles stuff, there's B-Bender in that. Uh, all of Albert Lee's solo albums, those are great. Um, I use B-Bender in some of my stuff. If you don't have my telethon album, then, you know, you can get a copy of that from uh, forestlee.com or outwestrecords.com. Um, you can also find it on Amazon, CD Baby, and probably TDPRI and things like that as well. Um, so that's about it. Hopefully uh, you enjoyed this video and uh, you got something out of it. And keep on picking and bending. Appreciate it.